As most of you guys watching this video probably already know, about 10 years ago, there was a bunch of rumors that had started about uh, K.I. And some of these rumors were, I would say, encouraged by some of her Twitter activity and uh, some of the activity that was going on on social media that other people were saying about her. If you don't know who K.I. is and who I'm talking about, um, that's a long explanation and a topic of a whole other video. There's plenty of information about her on the internet, so I'm not going to take time to explain that in this video because I got to get right to the to the point here. And that rumor, okay, that uh, she had done certain things, most famously killing Odie, who is the guy after whom Oblock is named Odie Perry. That rumor really at this point appears to be completely wrong. And... I was somebody who hopped on the bandwagon all the way back then and uh, started started running with that. And at some point, I think I probably became the driver of the bandwagon. So now, you know, it's partially up to me to redirect this thing before it keeps going. Uh, and listen, even if she, even if she personally and the, the other people, you know, around her or on the other side or wherever it might be, uh, were encouraging that, if it's wrong, it's wrong. The information has come out, and some of you guys have probably already seen this. Uh, and it's kind of being disseminated on social media now where there's a description and camera footage of Odie's real killer, okay? And the description that's coming out is a guy, okay? And K.I. dressed like a guy later in her life, so that in and of itself wouldn't necessarily rule her out. But the description is of a guy who's almost about six feet, dark-skinned, with dreads. K.I. was light skin. Now you could say it's nighttime and you know they might not have been able to see the complexion that well. Mm. Uh, K.I. was pretty clearly light skin man. I, I, I don't know any way in which you would mistake her for being uh, like a dark skin person. You know I mean she was pretty like solidly light skin man. Plus she wasn't anywhere near six feet. She was like five two. So that uh, description pretty much rules her out, man. And uh, not only that, but she never, th there was never enough evidence to, to actually pin that on her. So where did that rumor come from? Well, it came from a lot of stuff that was coming out in the mainstream media at the time of her death. There was just basically social media speculation. And this is how, you know, a lot of the, you know, now debunked rumors that I started back in the day started too. just social media speculation from other people, tweets, things like that. One guy had tweeted out at the time, and this is just some random person, like, you know, so a girl killed this guy or whatever, and then it turns out, it, like, most likely wasn't even a girl. So this is the article in the Sun-Times, and this is a now famous article from uh, July 23rd, 2015. They said, long before Jakira Barnes was murdered in a hail of bullets on the south side, her mother had heard unsettling persistent rumors about her. She was 17, 5 foot 3, 128 pounds. I'm sorry, 5 foot 3, not 5 foot 2. But they say, quote, Barnes, who kept a stack of newspaper. I'm skipping around here to the important points that I want to show you guys. They said she kept a stack of newspaper stories about her friends. They had been killed in street violence. And she was a suspect in three to five shootings, including at least one murder, they said. Talk on the street put the number of shootings much higher, at least 15. So notice what they say, quote, talk on the street. You know, the talk on the street since then, like in over the past, I'd say, year since a lot of stuff has been coming out, um, it, this kind of got blown way out of proportion, uh, which is not something that's uncommon. Now, one thing you got to be careful of as a blogger, and this is the most important part of the video for everybody to pay attention to. When you say something as a blogger, or I would say the mainstream media too, people are going to take that whatever point you're making and run with it all the way to the end zone to a point way beyond what you actually said. Now, when I was first coming out with some of these videos about these guys, especially King Von and KI, in the beginning, people were saying, well, you're giving them way too much. You're trashing their name. You're throwing dirt on their reputation. This is when King Von was locked up. You know, you're doing this, you're doing that. Once he started rapping, okay, and once other people start rapping about them, then everybody started saying the opposite. Well, you're not giving them enough. The, the rap scene, whether you're the rapper yourself or whether somebody else is rapping about you, it, it gasses your name up, okay? And it gasses up, like, people's, you know, image of you, like, way beyond what it actually is. Um, you know, I had put a lot of dirt on a lot of these guys' names. I mean, not saying that, um, you know, not saying that they weren't, like, partly facilitating that or whatever, but, 
You know, I mean, I, I was taking it like way beyond, but later their reputation got taken even beyond what I had taken it. And then people were saying that, you know, I was not giving them their credit. It's crazy like that, man. Like it's crazy the way people's idea of somebody or people's image of somebody is just based on something like, you know, some lyric that somebody had about them in a song. And sometimes the mainstream media can get caught up in this too. And uh, this is what I think was going on. So you notice they're just saying street rumors. So her death in April, they said there's nothing to quell to talk about her as the internet buzzed about Barnes' alleged involvement in gun violence. They interviewed uh, her mom, but I'm skipping here. They say, in 2011, Barnes was charged with discharging a weapon, although no gun was recovered. That's according to uh, her mom, but she was ordered to attend an alternative school in Cook County's juvenile detention center while the case against her progressed. So this is for discharging a weapon, okay? This is not for murder. The judge wanted to keep her off the street for her own protection. So she was found not guilty after witnesses who picked her out of a lineup changed their stories. So she continued to attend classes periodically at another alternative school on the far south side, but she was spending more time on the street, they said. So on the street, they said, Jakira Barnes was known as K.I. And in the weeks leading up to her death, she was also known as Lil Snoop for the female shooter in the TV crime drama The Wire. And police suspect that uh, she became embroiled in the tit-for-tat violence between her faction of the GDs and their rivals in a 20-block area near 63rd and Martin Luther King Drive in the Woodlawn neighborhood. So one high-level police official said, okay, so, now check this out right here. One high-level police official said that she was suspected in three to five shootings at least one of which was a murder, but police received information that a female gun was in, gunman was involved in those shootings. Well, since then, it's come out that it was a guy, okay? So, po guys, police put the wrong thing on people all the time. This is what you got to understand. Just because the cops say something doesn't mean that's what happened. They get lied to left and right, left and right, man. They've told me this. Like, they get false information from a lot of their sources and stuff like that. So, th it's not set in stone just because it came from the cops, and I'm not saying that to down the cops, but that's just the world that they're dealing with. Like the info that they get is shaky. And uh, so they said that, uh, that she matched the description. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. I mean, now it's come out the description is, you know, a six foot dark skinned male. No, that's not, that's nowhere close to her. But she was never charged in those shootings because no witnesses were willing to identify her, they said. Now you might say the implication in the article right there is that, well, they must just be afraid because you know they're gonna they're gonna get whacked if they you know if they if they identify her like this is a mafia boss or something like that and they're afraid of like retaliation that ain't it like people identify other people all the time in chicago police have no physical evidence okay here's the here's the part police have zero physical evidence linking her to the crimes one police source said she bragged about being a shooter everybody was afraid of her no no see you find me one person that says, oh, yeah, I feared K.I. I was afraid to pop out. Like one op that said, you know, I was afraid of her. I mean, they say the opposite. They said she acted with such swagger that, that she sometimes was, was mistaken for a boy. Again, this is according to police. So when a Chicago police officer, they said, shot one of her friends to death, and they're talking about Lil B, after he allegedly pointed a gun at the cop during a foot chase on March 29th, she sent the police a warning. She said, D.A. police, I'd kill you faster than ninjas. I'm, and she didn't say ninjas, but... Uh, on the corner and she wrote that on Twitter. So for days She posted messages about that shooting and she said it's a cold cold world She also worried that people were gunning for her. She said I got ninjas Trying to off me put me in a coffin coffin. She, she wrote that on Twitter. So on April 11th A hooded gunman shot her seven times in front of a home over by 64th and Eberhardt and two young men were wounded But investigators are certain that she was the target they said so one of them said, quote, seems even her own gang wanted her gone because she was such a lightning rod. That's according to a police source. See, again, that's way off, man. That's, you can't find nobody from that side that wanted her gone. Like, see, you see how the police are just getting sent way off? Her own gang wanted her gone. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. Bro, they loved her to death. They all loved her. She was like one of the most well-loved members of it. Nobody wanted her gone from that side. But like, like they're just, just saying anything. So here's the part about Odie, okay? They say, later that year, Odie Perry was shot and killed, possibly in retaliation for Tuka's murder. They said one theory is that Barnes, then 14, was his killer. So this is where I think the rumors started because, you know, this is just a theory, okay? And they're, the Sun Times is putting this out. You say it's a theory that, you know, she was the killer. One thing I'm going to say, a, a lot of 
times the police and, you know, the media and stuff like that, they'll hear statements that guys will make, okay, after somebody's dead, like, yeah, they killed so-and-so. Gang members will put the body on a dead person, okay, if the real killer is still alive, taking suspicion off of the real guy, okay? Like, this happens all the time. It's like, oh, yeah, no, that was that was so-and-so who died. Let's. It takes the heat off the police to solve the case because, oh, well, the guy's dead. So a, a lot of times, you know, they'll throw it on somebody who's dead, and, and it takes the heat off of them. You see what I'm saying? So in June of 2012, one of her friends, 13-year-old Taekwon Tyler, was killed by, while uh, leaving a party. And um, that was the point, okay, her friends and her acquaintances say that that was the point when she really changed. Okay, so Tuka was shot to death in January of 2011, and Odie was killed later that year. Okay, now, that was 2011. Taekwon was killed in 2012. So Odie died before KI really, like, turned different. So the theory that she killed him, it, it doesn't match up with the, with the chain of events and with the timeline that her friends give. Like, she didn't really get on that until after Taekwon died, according to them. Okay, according to everybody who knew her, like, it was Taekwon's death that really turned her like that. When she was still 14, before Taekwon died, when Taekwon was still alive, it wasn't really like that. And Taekwon died the year after Odie died and Tuka. You see what I'm saying? So the, the time doesn't match up. So she dedicated herself, they said, to avenging him. And began calling herself Taekwondo Assassin. But again, Odie was already dead by this point. So now this is according to Andrew Holmes. He's a, he's a community activist in Chicago. Um, he, you know, he helps the families and stuff. And he's a, he's great, man. I, I like the, the work that he does, man. But they said as part, of his, as part of his duties, he visits the families of murder victims. And several times, they said families have said that they suspected KI in the killings of their loved ones. So again, this is just people suspecting it. Many people, they said that, he said, many people that I've talked to said she was the getaway driver in cars that were discharging weapons out of, out of the windows. Now, you guys know how I am, right? I know the police. I know the law. Like, they'll put the body on everybody that was there, everybody that was involved. I don't do that. I told you that. Like, I, I only, I'm only putting it on somebody, on the guy that pulled the trigger if it's confirmed that, like, his shot killed him. Even if somebody pulled the trigger, but, you know, it's like uh, KTS Vaughn says, every shooter ain't a killer. Like, if you shot the guy but he didn't die and somebody else shot the guy at the same time and he died because of his shots i'm only going to give it to the guy whose shot actually killed the guy and he's saying well she was like the getaway driver in cars where guys were discharging weapons and he's he, again this is just a rumor he said uh he saw a photo of her wearing a shirt that said cpdk meaning chicago police killer and she said he said she called herself a hitter again these are just all rumors so the, the whole thing about her killing odie I think it started from, you know, just rumors, her street reputation getting blown out of control. Not to say that she wasn't, you know, on anything, okay? Because people, again, people, every time I say this, people take my point and they run. You're going to, you know, people are going to be saying, well, you're saying KI was a lame that never popped out and she was in the house just being a good girl. No, I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying the body of Odie specifically is... I'm saying that the, the particular things that they're saying that she did, especially killing Odie, it doesn't match up with the evidence that's coming out now. I mean, the evidence that's coming out now, it, it doesn't match that. And uh, like I said, you know, I got to correct anything that I'm responsible for perpetuating myself. And I was repeating all this stuff back then. So, yeah, it appears that, that was false. And, and again, you see where a lot of this is starting. Just like he said, she said, and then the media picks it up and just repeats it. And then people just take it as set in stone. And it's not. So, you know, I, I feel like everybody needs to be more responsible. Technically, they're not violating any ethical code. The, the, the media, if they say, well, you know, it's just rumored that she did this or that, or CPD said that they found this rumor. And as long as they're saying and letting you know it's just a rumor, they're not overstepping their boundaries. But still, the way that that plays out in public is that people take it as, as fact. Even if you told them it's just a rumor, they still gonna, they're still going to take it as fact. So, anyways, man, uh, yeah, it appears that KI did not kill Odie. So that was the uh, only point, basically, final point of this video. But you guys let me know what you think in the comment section, man. Everybody wants to see your report. I'm out.